All right, this is going to be the New Testament part of the Take Heed series. Turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 6, and uh, let's take heed. Verse 1, Matthew 6, verse 1. Jesus speaking, take heed. In other words, pay attention, listen carefully. You know, one thing, I went to college for a couple years, and uh, one thing I learned in college, well, actually two things. Uh, one, I learned how to do research. One of my professors said that uh, if you learn nothing else in college, you would learn how to do research. Now, this was way before the Internet is what it is today. There was no Google, Google back in them days. So, you know, you had to go to the library and look things up. A request, uh, look on microfilm, microfish, and uh, articles, and whatever, periodicals, and all that good stuff. Uh, so I did learn how to do research, and it's helped me greatly. But the uh, second thing I learned was that if somebody repeated something more than once in a, in a class, it was, it was going to be on the test. It was important. And uh, Jesus said, take heed a number of times. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not your alms, A-L-M-S, before men to be seen of them. What's he talking about? Charity. Okay, that's, that's basically what alms is. It's a... Old English word, it means, you know, you're giving to the poor or what have you. It has reference to uh, helping those less fortunate than yourself. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues? Who's in the hip synagogues? Thinks about, think about that. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, it always kills me watching these, uh, I don't know if you ever read the society page of your paper or magazines or what have you, but uh, you'll have rich people. Let's just throw a name out there. The Rockefellers, for example. Um, he's on the board of directors of a lot of charities. And uh, a lot of charities, matter of fact, most of them, uh, they pay their board of directors a salary. And some of them get very healthy salaries. Uh, one of the few charities that I like and contribute money to is the uh, Salvation Army. Uh, a few years ago, one of the top, the, the director, the head guy, he made $12,500 a year in salary. Uh, some of these charities pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to their uh, top people. I mean, <laughs> There was one charity spent less than a nickel for every dollar collected uh, went to help anyone. It all went to administrative costs. I mean, yeah, when you're paying, I think it was Bar uh, Elizabeth Dole, you know, Bob Dole, Senator's wife. She was head of the Red Cross. Uh, if, if they paid me her salary one year, what they were paying her with the Red Cross, um, I'd be able to buy a house and retire for the rest of my life. I don't remember how much it was, but it was substantial. So the reason I'm pointing this out is a lot of times people like the Rockefellers. They'll go to a, they'll have their staff book a banquet room, a huge banquet room in a five-star hotel. And if you don't know what a five-star hotel is, like most people, uh, that's like a hotel that where the rooms are over a thousand bucks a night. And, uh, you know, if you call the, ho the front desk and tell them you want or need something, they get it for you. 
usually in less than five minutes. I mean, you'll have somebody knocking on your door saying, oh, here you go, sir. Here's your cup of coffee. I mean, they will run, run and get you a cup of coffee and run up to give, give it to you. I mean, they, you know, five-star hotel, thousand bucks a night. Yeah, they uh, kiss your proverbial backside. Well, what they do at the super expensive hotels, they rent a banquet hall, you know, a room capable of, you know, over 100, 200, 300 people being there. Beautiful, decorated, you know, and they'll have these banquet dinners honoring the people that gave them money. Well, they're not really giving money to these charities. They're getting tax write-offs. And then they use the money to have these banquets. And they're, you know, it's funny. You give $50,000 uh, or 20, let's say 20, 15, 5, 10, 15, dollars to this charity you get invited to the banquet, get to have a, a, a meal and, you know, $1,000 bottles of champagne. You get your pictures taken by the local newspaper and plastered all over the celebrity or uh, society section. And uh, you get a tax write-off. So really, it doesn't cost you much of anything. You get publicity and uh, you get a fantastic meal and limousines and driving you around and they hire entertainers, you know, maybe Seinfeld or somebody and they, you know, and, and that's what they're doing. And, you know, maybe a nickel goes to help anybody. You know, all the rest goes to pay for the banquet and uh, you're eating filet mignon and lobster or whatever these people eat. I don't know. I've never... I've never been invited to one of these things. So, but that's how it works. Now, I live in South Florida. I live close to Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, that's why I know all this stuff, because I read the news, you know, the newspaper and the society section. And that's what they do. So, take heed that you do not your alms or charity before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. You know, when you blow a trumpet, everybody's like, what's going on? And they look to see this guy blowing a trumpet, and then he's passing out whatever, charity, his charity. You know, he's doing his giving. Why do they do that? Because they want to be seen. And everybody think, oh, isn't that wonderful? They're, they're helping the poor. Oh, that's so wonderful. Do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 3. Now this is, this is for the Christians. Jesus speaking. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. You know, don't let... Don't do everything in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Verse 4. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues. Who's standing in the synagogues? And in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray... Use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. Think about the rosary, people. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Do you need to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over? Like, if God didn't hear you the first time, you got to say it ten more times? I mean, come on. Verse 8. 
Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. Uh, I guess we'll just keep reading, right? Because Jesus said, pay heed, pay no, uh, you know, take heed. Uh, let's see, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Jesus teaching us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, uh, as opposed to those whose Father is not in heaven, down below, you know, Satan, the devil, uh, some say Lucifer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, guess what? The Father's will is not being done in earth like it is in heaven. But that's coming. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, in other words, forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Didn't Jesus on the cross say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? And I kind of wonder if he was speaking about the Romans, like the Roman soldiers. I don't know, just my thing. Verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now here's a very important thing, verse 14. A lot of Christians don't get this. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And what is he talking about, trespasses? Uh, you're trespassing when you are going somewhere that you don't belong. Um, you know, when you're on somebody else's land, their property, you're trespassing. Well, that's what sin is. You know, we're going somewhere where God doesn't want us to be. So, you know, other people will, let's say somebody steals something from you. You know, you should forgive them because God the Father will give us through Christ. But if we don't forgive, we will not be forgiven. A lot of Christians don't get that. And, uh... You know, it's a very important doctrine. I almost never hear anybody in church teaching this. Very, very few times have I ever taught this, uh, heard this taught in church. Um, you know? But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, what is fasting? Not eating. It's... Uh, fasting is really, really good for a lot of things. It's good for health reasons, uh, poisons, and things that your body doesn't know how to digest uh, will be stored in the fat. And this is one of the reasons why women get breast cancer, according to some health uh, experts and doctors, okay? Okay. I'm not, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know these things, just what I've read. I'm not giving medical advice. Uh, thank you, lawyers out there. But uh, according to some health professionals, that's why women get breast cancer, because the, the chemicals, the man-made chemicals that don't belong in your body, they're stored in the fat, and they damage the body. Um, so when you fast... Uh, after, it takes about three days for your body to gear up from um, having regular food burned up to where it starts converting the fat into energy. And then what it does, it allows your organs to rest. And 
like your stomach, you know, your stomach will get a rest. And then it'll take all those chemicals and flush them out of your body. You'll notice when you fast that your skin might stink. Well, that's because you're getting rid of all the poisons and toxins in your body. And, uh, you know, you should drink lots of clean, pure water, not that garbage with fluoride and chlorine in it. And uh, that's how you clean your body, you know. But um, you'll get cold easy when you fast, okay? And you're and you basically you're you're trying to get your body into subjection with your spirit, you know. Jesus didn't Jesus said that the um, spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Oh, uh, let's see, Matthew twenty six forty one, Jesus said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, you know, fasting is, fasting's uh, good to, to get your flesh into the same, I guess you could say the same frequency or whatever as your spirit is. I don't know. I don't know exactly what word to use, but verse 16, Matthew 6. Moreover, when ye fast, not not if, it says when. And there's a uh, Hebrew uh, thing, holiday, uh, well, fest, festival or on the Hebrew calendar called the Day of Atonement. That was a day of a national day of fasting, repentance, and prayer. Oh, that Christians would follow that instead of Easter and Christmas and uh, what have you. It was a day of repentance, fasting, and prayer. Matter of fact, uh, if you want to know how the Jews celebrate this, look up Kol Nidre. K-O-L, one word, second word, Nidre, N-I-D-R-E. Look it up. Read that carefully. They basically tell God that any promises that they make, they have no intention of keeping. Think about that the next time it, you go to court with a Jew and he gives testimony under oath. Um, their oaths, their promises mean nothing. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Go to a Jewish website. Look up Kol Nidre. Verse 16, Matthew 6. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, Anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Lay up, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, if you have uh, good clothing, don't the moths eat it? And if you have a, if you you have a nice Mercedes Benz, doesn't a rust? Won't it rust after a while? And if you have gold and silver and diamonds, uh, don't thieves break in and steal? It says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light is 
that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon has reference to uh, money. Therefore I say unto you, now this is Jesus speaking, not Bob, take no thought of your, for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? What is raiment? Clothing? That's basically the only thing that you're com um, promised in this life. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8. He says, And having food and raiment, food and clothing, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. If you've got food and clothes, be happy. That's basically what he's saying here. Verse 26. Well, verse 25. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? You know, and that's the life. Food and clothes, right? Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Can you make yourself a foot taller by thinking? No. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. You think, you think Solomon's clothing was more beautiful than some of the, the flowers? I don't think so. Verse 30. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? After all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness. What's, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness not our righteousness, by keeping a bunch of rules and laws. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. If if there's a law that can make me righteous, let me know what it is, because I haven't figured it out yet. What's, what's God's righteousness? Faith in Christ, people. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, let's com uh, contrast this with uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Oh, uh, let's see. I guess we'll skip to verse 4. I don't want to make this an all-day thing. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto him? Who is able to make war with him? And the question, the answer to that question is, nobody on the earth that is flesh and blood alone. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Things are going to be real bad, people, for forty-two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. 
and was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now what does that got to do what I just read have to do with the uh, end times. Well, God promises you food and clothes. That's it, people. Doesn't promise you, uh, you know, contrary to the TBN crowd, the name it and claim it group, you know, God doesn't promise you a, a Learjet and a Mercedes Benz and a house on the beach. Uh, no, that doesn't, or a mansion on the beach, I should say. No, 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 no. Food and clothes, people. Where are we going? Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So if you're to go into captivity, go for your faith in Christ. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So in other words, if your faith in if you're going to be taken into captivity or a prisoner for your faith in Christ, you're to go. You're not to fight. And if you kill him with a gun, you'll be killed with a gun. But let me tell you something, people. Uh, those that get their heads cut off for Christ, that's a guaranteed ticket to heaven. Guaranteed. Period. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Oh, yes, the horns sound like a lamb, like the lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. So it looks like a lamb, but it speaks like a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, people so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Well, guess who else did this? Elijah did. You want to read about that? If you want to read about uh, who did fire called fire down from the sky, you can read about that in the second book of Kings, chapter 1. Uh, Elijah was going to be taken prisoner. And he didn't want to be taken prisoner, so he called down fire from the sky and burned up the captain and his, uh, his 50 soldiers. Not just once, but twice. And then finally, the, the third uh, captain was uh, sent of the wicked king uh, and said, go arrest Elijah. And he crawled on his hands and knees to... Elijah, and uh, said, you know, he said, therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. <laughs> How's that? So, you know, uh, a lot of people are going to be fooled. Let's go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13, 13. 13 is a bad number in scripture, people. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. See, people are going. A lot of people are, are going to think this is Elijah, when actually it's the devil and his people. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast television, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, doesn't television speak? I don't know. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell food and clothing. 
and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Contrast this with uh, Genesis chapter, I think it's Genesis chapter 2. If it's not Genesis chapter 2, it's chapter 1. But man was created on the sixth day. That's why the six is the number of a man. Uh, so, if you don't have the, the mark of the beast, you can't buy, you can't sell. You're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to buy clothing. God promises his people food and clothing. And my opinion is this. I honestly think that God is going to, uh, if those that go into the tribulation period will be given manna. That's my opinion. Just like in the, uh, the desert under Moses, when Israel was traveling through the wilderness, they were given manna. I don't think they're going to, you know, I, I, it's going to take faith, people. You're going to have to have faith where God, you know, or Christ, I mean, Jesus even said, you know, uh, he said, uh, Matthew 6, 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where wherewithal shall we be clothed? You know, it's going to take faith, people, to refuse the mark of the beast. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the mor morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You know, and in verse 30 it says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You know, the world's not going to have the faith to stand against the beast. Most church people, they are so... Uh, they're, they're so, I don't know how to explain it, but they're so, uh, they're so certain that they're not going to be here for the mark of the beast. A lot of people are going to take it. You watch, church people, people that wouldn't bother to crack their Bible open, would never bother to read it. I mean, how hard is it to go to... Um, Amazon and order the King James Bible on CD. Uh, I prefer the Alexander Scorby version, but that's just my opinion. I He was a Shakespearean um, actor. Beautiful voice. Um, well, I don't know. He, he I wouldn't say he was beautiful, but, uh, you know, I've never met a beautiful man, but uh, he had a very good a very good voice. And, um, you know, 20 bucks, 22 to $25. Boom. You got the New Testament on CD. Just plug it in on your way to work into your car, you know. Listen. I mean, it's amazing. You do that for, uh, turn off your TV and, you know, if you don't want to read, you can listen. It's amazing how much you'll learn. But uh, I believe that uh, God... It, some of us are going to be called to testify, and we're going to have to, you know, get our heads cut off. But like I said, it's a guaranteed ticket to heaven. In Mark 13, verse 9, But take heed to yourselves. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, right? But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues, who hangs out at the synagogues. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, 
for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you something, people. If, if they take you, if you're to go into captivity, you go for your faith in Christ. Somebody wants to kill you because you're the wrong color, uh, by all means, fight back. But if they want to take you because of your faith in Christ, you're to go with them, not to fight them. And when they get ready to cut your head off, don't even think about what you're going to say because God, the Holy Ghost, is going to speak through you and that's how you know that you're sealed unto the day of redemption, that you're going to be in the kingdom. And then when they cut your head off, that's a guaranteed ticket to heaven, people. Very, very few church people are going to do this. Trust me, they're going to take the mark. They're not going to have faith to refuse it. After all, how am I going to feed my poor little children if I don't take the mark of the beast? I've had people tell me that God would forgive them for taking the mark because they're going to take the mark to feed their children. And after all, God wants me to feed my children. What kind of faith is that? And guess what, people? Those that take the mark, oof. There's a very strong warning in Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, what does that mean? It means it's poured out full strength, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath, the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented, tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Taking the mark is not having faith in Jesus. No, that's that's the op actual, the, the exact opposite. Then you got people like John MacArthur, famous TV preacher, telling you that well, you know, if it once saved, always saved, eternal security. You know, if you said your little sinner's prayer in our church and you take the mark of the beast, you're saved. Don't worry about it. You know, you're going to go to heaven, even though you take the mark of the beast. I'm being, I'm paraphrasing, but he he does say that. Whereas the Bible says the opposite. So what kind of faith is that? You, you don't have faith that God's going to clothe you and God's going to feed you? I mean, really? So, all right, well, people, this is uh, the end of this particular Bible study. Um, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world in Jesus' precious name. Amen.